Greetings, everyone. These are certainly intense times on planet Earth. And today I want to talk about the powerful total lunar eclipse that we will be experiencing on November 8th. I'm putting this video out a few weeks ahead of time and purposefully putting it out before October 25th when we have the new moon partial solar eclipse that leads us into the beginning of this lunar cycle that then culminates with this total lunar eclipse on November 8th. I think this is a very powerful time and I think that this community, which I'm so grateful for and how we can support each other in these times of transition and transformation. And I know how many of you are energetically sensitive. So you're going to be feeling the energy of these eclipses as they approach. So I think it can be helpful to be anticipating the culmination of this lunar cycle in this lunar eclipse on November 8th, as we're moving into the beginning of that cycle on October 25th. So let me talk about the energies of the eclipse and how we can best work with it. And it's layered. I do believe this lunar eclipse will have impacts on the collective level. It will have impacts on our relationships. And at the deepest level, it's guiding us in how we can be in our own individual process of healing and transformation to support the larger shifts that are unfolding as we move into the age of Aquarius. But let's look at the chart. Here is the chart of this powerful lunar eclipse. And what I want you to focus on is how at the time of the eclipse, the full moon will be conjunct Uranus and the North Node. And as is always true at the time of the full moon, opposite the sun, and the sun will be in conjunction with Mercury, Venus, and the South Node. So this total lunar eclipse is highlighting the powerful energies that we've been in with these lunar nodes, South Node in Scorpio, North Node in Taurus, and this incredibly powerful configuration with Uranus conjunct the North Node, and Uranus is continuing to be in this square with Saturn. So again, the Uranus-Saturn square is about the transitions that we're in collectively as we're moving into these new paradigms. We're moving towards the energy and ways of being of the age of Aquarius and needing to let go of the paradigms of the past. Remember that this powerful combination of Uranus and the North Node, they were conjunct within five degrees starting mid-June and will continue to be in that powerful configuration until the middle of January, 2023. So we're in that very powerful time where Uranus is ramping up its energies to guide us collectively and individually to see clearly what we're needing to break free from, what patterns of the past we're needing to let go, and what new directions are we meant to move into. And remember, Uranus cuts through illusion. It shows us what's true, what's real, helps us to see what's out of balance, and guides us to have clarity and insight about the new ways of being we're meant to move into. As we work, with this powerful eclipse, I think it can be helpful to see exactly where the eclipse will be in the sky at that time on November 8th. This is showing you exactly where the moon will be conjunct Uranus and the North Node in the sky at that time of the lunar eclipse. And what I want you to notice is it lands in this very powerful part of the sky where we have the stars of Cetus the whale, Perseus the warrior, here's Andromeda the maiden, 
And it's this powerful configuration that is being highlighted by this full moon lunar eclipse. And remember again, Uranus has been in this part of the sky since June and will continue to be there with the North Node until January. But this lunar eclipse is particularly intensifying our focus on the energy of this part of the sky and its meaning for us in this time. So let's talk about what the meaning is of these constellations and this powerful part of the sky. And to understand the layers of what we need to be working with at the time of this eclipse, let me unpack the mythology of the story of Perseus and Andromeda and Cetus. This is a myth coming to us from Greek mythology. And remember, the time of ancient Greece is as we've moved into the patriarchal period and into those paradigms of the age of Aries, of Mars, of this patriarchal dynamic of power over, of idealization of the sacred masculine. And the sacred masculine is about our effort to experience our individuality, our self-expression, how we can individually find our path of journey and exploration and evolution in, on the planet. So this emphasis on the energy of the sacred masculine, which came into play at the time of the age of Aries, beginning around 2000 BC and has continued up through the present, is in contrast to the age of Taurus, which preceded the age of Aries and honored the energies of the sacred feminine, which we're needing to come back to, to bring back into balance in this time as we move into the age of Aquarius. And the energies of the sacred feminine are about the wisdom of relationship, our awareness that all of life is sacred, that everything is interconnected, and that we need to live in right harmony and right balance with all that is. So as we're moving into the age of Aquarius and needing to balance the energies of the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine. That means how do we find our individual creative self-expression in service to community, in collaboration and co-creation with others, such that how we act, how we express ourselves is in right relationship with each other, with the earth and sky and all that is. But let's come back now to the myth of Perseus the warrior and Andromeda and Cetus and what this lunar eclipse is calling our attention to. To understand the story of Perseus coming out of, as I said, Greek mythology, what's interesting is that Perseus was born to his mother who was the child of a king of Argos. He had received, the king had received a prophecy that his grandson would be the source of his own demise and death. So out of his fear for his own life, the king locked his daughter in this underground chamber to keep her from marrying, from getting pregnant, from having this child who would lead to his death. Zeus, being Zeus, manages to infiltrate the chamber, impregnate this child of the king, and it, this results in Perseus's birth. The king now dismayed that his daughter has in fact given birth to this grandchild, is afraid to actually slay the two of them. So instead he sets them out to sea 
on a ship, hoping that they'll get shipwrecked and drown, and he will be saved from this future death by his grandson. So we see at the outset of the story that Perseus' life begins with betrayal by the grandfather, betrayal by the fathers, this whole patriarchal theme of power over, needing to maintain control. How do I protect myself no matter what the impact on others? This is the shadow side of the sacred masculine and the shadow side of the patriarchal paradigms that we're needing to end and let go of in this time of transition and transformation. Perseus and his mother manage to survive the storm, land on an island, are taken in by a fisherman who rescues them, and they establish their life on this remote island. However, as Perseus gets older and his mother is still this beautiful, powerful woman, the king of that island falls in love with her and wants to be with her. However, she doesn't want the relationship. This king, in his own greed and in his own desire to have what he wants, assumes that Perseus is the problem here. And if he can get rid of the son, he can claim the mother. So the king gives Perseus this task to go on a mission to kill Medusa, the Gorgon. Perseus, being the young warrior that he is, is excited to have a mission that he can accomplish and to meet the expectations of his king. So he sets off on this journey. But again, he is being sent for another agenda out of the king's greed and desire for his own agenda, his own ends. And he's actually trying to set Perseus up for failure and for death. And I think we can see clearly how this theme continues to play out in the world, where corrupt leaders who are abusing their power send young people into war, into violence, on these missions for their own greed, for their own ends, without any concern about the impact on others. This is part of the paradigm that Uranus is saying needs to be dismantled. We need to see through illusion to see the truth of how destructive this is. Meanwhile, Perseus goes on his mission and he manages with the support of the other gods to slay, behead Medusa, who is seen as this great monster. In reality, Medusa is this ancient archetypal being who's holding on to the energy of the sacred feminine in the midst of this patriarchal period. But Perseus, in his lack of awareness of this and in his effort to be successful in his life in the world as this young warrior, doesn't realize the damage that he's done in slaying this powerful figure holding the wisdom of the sacred feminine. How many of us in the collective are trying to do what we think is right, are trying to meet cultural expectations, are trying to succeed in the world with the expectations that are put on us and don't realize how much we're colluding with these damaging paradigms. Perseus returns from his mission with the head of Medusa to bring it back to the king. And as he's on his way home, he suddenly sees this young maiden chained to the rocks. This young maiden is the daughter of the king and queen of Ethiopia. And why is she chained on the rocks? Because her parents, the king and queen of this region, had gotten terrified because of climate change, because of storms that were happening, that somehow they were out of favor with the gods. And the king turned to Zeus and said, what do I do to protect myself and my kingdom? 
And Zeus said, I think the only thing that you can do is sacrifice your daughter to the stormy energies of the sea and allow that sacrifice to appease the gods to bring calm to your land and protect you. So the king and queen take their young daughter and chain her to the rocks as a sacrifice. And again, we see a theme of trauma, of betrayal, of this young woman being set up for death by her own parents. Here's Andromeda feeling victimized, feeling helpless, feeling trapped as she's chained to the rocks, threatened by Cetus the whale, who's seen as this ferocious sea monster. Perseus, being the warrior coming to the rescue, takes the head of Medusa, which her stare is known to turn anything into stone, and he turns the head of Medusa towards Cetus the whale to slay the dangerous sea monster. He rescues Andromeda, ends up marrying her, and ends up establishing his own kingdom with her. So this is a story coming out of the patriarchal period about power over domination. How do we take actions in the world to ensure our position and power? But it's also the story of trauma, betrayal. Perseus is betrayed. Andromeda is betrayed. And we also see in this patriarchal paradigm a betrayal of the earth. The elements of nature, the whale, carrying the wisdom of the deep is seen as a dangerous monster needing to be controlled or destroyed. And that is a theme that we see in these past 5,000 years of the patriarchal period, the destruction of our earth, the exploitation of her resources and the effort to control her or exploit her out of our own human desire for survival, control, and domination. Uranus and this total lunar eclipse are saying, look at these patterns, these patterns of power over imbalance, domination, trauma. It's time to stop. I do believe at this time of the lunar eclipse, this is putting a spotlight on these patterns in the collective that we need to end, that need to be dismantled for us to come back into harmony, come back into balance, to be able to move into the energies of the Aquarian age. But let's look at another layer of this story. It's also about relationships. Let me show you where the sun is opposite the moon in the sky at the time of this lunar eclipse. Here we see at the time of the full moon lunar eclipse, the sun opposite the moon is conjunct Mercury and Venus in the stars of Libra right at the fulcrum point. This is very powerful in that it is giving us this light and wisdom of the sun that we're also being infused with at the time of this lunar eclipse that is about our need to come back into balance and harmony, Libra. How are our relationships? How are our thoughts, Mercury, in the ways that we interact and communicate in balance or out of balance? How do we come back into harmony, come back into right relationship with each other? So Venus is highly featured in this lunar cycle and at the time of this lunar eclipse. And if you remember in my video on the new moon partial solar eclipse, at that time, the new moon and sun are exactly 
conjunct Venus. So this whole month, this whole lunar cycle that's highlighted by this lunar eclipse on November 8th is also about how are we in relationship with others? Venus in Scorpio, those that we are close to. And I do believe that part of the meaning of this lunar eclipse is guiding us, again, if you think about this story and these energies of the sky, it is calling us to look at where are we in our personal relationships, where we are projecting onto others, where we are caught in these out of balance patterns or traumatizing patterns that are impacting ourself and are impacting others. Remember in this story of Perseus, Andromeda, and Cetus, none of these key characters are actually seen in the truth of who they are. Perseus is being used as a pawn by a king who's trying to get him out of the way to pursue his own ends. Andromeda is being sacrificed and victimized by her own parents because they don't actually care about her they care about their own survival. And Cetus, the whale, holding the wisdom of the natural world, the wisdom of the earth, the wisdom of the deep waters, is being seen as a monster, as somehow dangerous and needing to be destroyed. So we get a sense in this story that no one is being seen clearly. It's all about projection, people operating out of fear or greed or power over, or even for Perseus, his desire to succeed in the world without realizing he's colluding with these patterns of destruction. And Andromeda is in a position where she feels like a helpless victim of the circumstances around her and the subculture that she's a part of. So I do believe that this lunar eclipse is saying, step back. Look at how you are in relationship. How are you seeing yourself and the other person clearly? Or how are you projecting? Or how are you caught in your own patterns of fear? Or your own past experiences of betrayal and trauma, such that you're reacting out of that in relationship and continuing to perpetuate these patterns of destruction, of pain, of abandonment, of betrayal, of trauma, of victimization. In this story of Perseus and Andromeda and Cetus, we see the triad of trauma. You have the victim, you have the perpetrator, you have the rescuer. And we can play out those patterns in our relationships. And remember also that these characters reside within us, that we have within us those parts that are the victim and have felt the trauma and pain of our lives and where we have felt betrayed or we have felt heard, hurt or exploited or abused. But we also have the part of us that is the perpetrator that can get reactive and act out out of our own fear, our own longing for survival, our own anger and reactivity at the trauma. And we also have a part of us that can be the rescuer that wants to make a healing difference in the world and wants to be somehow stopping the trauma. We have all of those aspects within us and we tend to also play out those patterns in our relationships. And this lunar eclipse is saying, stop, step back. Stop acting out the drama and the trauma. Step into your witness self, look at what's going on. Uranus cuts through the illusion to help us see the truth of what is going on in our lives. And I think it's powerful that Uranus and this full moon, lunar eclipse, are right in front of the stars of Cetus, the whale. 
They're saying, see through the eyes of the deep. Go into your own deep waters. Go into your own depths beneath the surface of the sea like the whale. Allow yourself to feel what's going on within you. Step out of the actions and interactions in the world and in your own personal life. Go within. Go into that inner quiet. Go beneath the surface. Dive into your own deep emotions and see through the eyes of that inner wisdom and that deep knowing what is playing out in your life. And I do believe that this time of the lunar eclipse will be giving us clarity about the relationships in our lives and what relationships we may be in that we need to end because they are patterns that are re-traumatizing us or are not healthy and in balance for us. But I also think this powerful lunar eclipse is giving us clarity and helping us to see where have we been projecting in our relationships or acting out the trauma from the past? How do we step back from that, see each other clearly, be in true communication with each other in order for there to be healing and reconciliation and resolution? So I do believe this will be a powerful time in dealing with these dynamics in relationship with this lunar cycle and with the clarity that will come at the time of the full moon lunar eclipse. But again, at the deepest level, this eclipse is calling us to do the inner work that we need to do. Remember, this is in alignment with South Node in Scorpio, North Node in Taurus. And remember that in the sky, that south node is in the stars of Libra. It's calling us to dive deep into our own inner knowing, our own inner process, to look at where are we out of balance, out of harmony, out of right relationship with ourselves? Where are we playing out the trauma from the past as a victim or perpetrator? or rescuer in a way that we're not being true to ourselves and seeing clearly the people that we are in relationship with. So I truly believe that this lunar cycle and this lunar eclipse are saying, step back, go deep within, look at what's out of balance in your life. Look at where you need to step out of these trauma patterns not only in how you're interacting with other people, being a part of what's out of balance in the collective, but ways in which you're in patterns that are harming yourself or out of balance for who you are and how you need to be in alignment with your true self. So this is a very powerful time when I think a lot will be revealed to us about what's out of balance in the collective, about what's out of balance or where we're in unhealthy patterns in our relationships and how we're out of balance within ourselves. And I believe that we're being guided and supported by these energies to heal and come back into balance. And I think it's significant that Uranus and the full moon are by Cetus the whale not only calling us to go deep within, but saying, as we connect with nature, we can come back into balance and heal. Remember my interview with Elizabeth Satoris, who brilliantly talked about how the species on our earth, as they mature, move out of this paradigm of competition, power over the domination model into collaboration, cooperation, the realization that we are all interconnected and interdependent. The natural world is trying to help us humans break out of these unhealthy patterns and come back into balance, into harmony, into right relationship, into that reintegration of the sacred feminine 
with the sacred masculine into that remembrance of how to be in right relationship with each other and with all that is. And I also think it's very significant at the time of this lunar eclipse that Arizina, that has been such a powerful planetary energy in this time, is actually in the stars of Cetus. Remember that what makes Eris Zena unique as a planetary body is that she is not traveling on the ecliptic. She is actually 44 degrees off. And so much of her archetypal energy is guiding us to step out of the conventional paradigms, step off the beaten track, dare to dive deep within ourselves and in connection with the wisdom of the earth to move in new directions and to find our creative expression in a way that is in balance and harmony with all that is. Arizina in the stars of Cetus is saying, listen to the wisdom of nature, the wisdom of the earth. Dive deep into yourself and dare to be different, to be creative, to step out of the conventional paradigms that are so destructive, to use your energies, your gifts, to move in directions that are an expression of your true self, of being in balance and harmony with the sacredness of the life around you, and being a part of these grassroots efforts of those of us who are awakening, who are moving into the Aquarian paradigms to be collaborating together to co-create new ways of being that are, are in balance and harmony, coming from compassion and justice and fairness to co-create a new world together. Thank you for being a part of this community, for working with these energies consciously, and know that this is a powerful time where we are being guided to step back, be in our witness self, see the ways in which we need to release these paradigms and patterns from the past that are harming us and are a part of these destructive paradigms in the collective consciousness, to move into these radically new ways of being that are about coming back into harmony, balance, compassion, love, living from the heart, and co-creating a new world together. May we be supported by these powerful eclipses. May we work these energies consciously and support each other in moving into these new paradigms. Blessed be. Thank you.